I have my Plan 9 file and auth server for my home grid. In this video, we'll focus on the auth side of the file and auth. I'm connected to my file server with DrawTerm on a Linux machine. And I'll start by adding some users, then go on to overview how the authorization system works. This won't be a deep dive as I'm not a big math nerd and I'm not qualified to explain all the cryptography and such, uh, but I can touch on the programs and functions that are involved in the auth system. I'll be coming back to this chart on screen as I walk through the various things that use the auth system. I'm logged in as Glenda, the owner of the file and auth server, and the only user authorized to make modifications to the system. I want to add some more users, and this technically involves two steps. So first, I'll need to add them to the file storage so that it knows that there will be you know, a user to store their permissions and such. So I'm gonna be sending a command, new user, I'll be the dad. And I'll send that to serve TWFS command. So the details on that's for another video because uh, that mostly just has to do with how the file server works. But next I need to add that user to the authorization system. Uh, and like so much in plan nine, this involves a file system. So in bin, there's a directory called auth. So I'm going to run auth TFS. Oops, forgot since I'm on a draw term here, it doesn't actually see the hard drive. So one of the things it needs to do is be able to read the NVRAM partition. So I'm going to need to bind after the storage device into dev. I'll try that again. All right, it's read in the one key. It's the only user on here right now is Glenda. So what this has to do is it has to read the NVRAM, fetch a key stored for this machine, use that to decrypt the keys stored in the file server, and then make them accessible to any programs that want to work with them. So the program I want to work with next is going to be a change user. Change user is going to be the dad. So I can now enter in a password for this user. Confirm it. I'm not doing that. No expiration date. And then the rest is sort of typical business related stuff. And there, now I have a user um, set up for the Plan 9 system that can both authorize with the auth server um, and can store files on the file server. So I'm now logged in as my new user on the Ninefront terminal. And the first time you log in with a new user, so went ahead and put that in, um, you're not gonna have any files on the file server. Uh, so you'll just be greeted with a bare RC prompt. And there's a script in libs or sys, sys slash lib um, to set up all your basic files that you need called new user. I run that. Now it's finishing up the last steps here. And here we go. And I now have a user and I can access the programs as a user. Run stats, running here on the thin T and there we go. So now I'm going to go through um, the steps to sort of set up that outside facing networking port again and sort of walk through, you know, kind of all the stuff that would be happening behind the scenes. So I'm going to use Rimport again. So Rimport is actually just a um, an RC script. So RC bin Rimport. And it runs just a variety of little programs, but ultimately those are going to be, you know, making a connection to the server and um, both the file and authorization end of it. I'll do import, 
Oops. Port from central. The serve device and put it in N. Oops. Oh, this. And there we go, we have those. So my user will have the ability to read and write to this net one. And I'll go ahead and mount and net one over my net. And this will then give me the ability to talk to the outside world. So yeah, Rimport is a script that calls other programs and it makes a bunch of 9p calls uh, to eventually attach both this file system and to do the auth to make sure that I'm even allowed to do it. So one of the things the auth system does is check in with Factotum. And again, like so many Plan 9 things, this is exposed as a file system. So I can see this in mount Factotum. And the one I want to look at here is going to be this control. And this will list out any sort of keys that I've already stored to connect with other systems. So the authorization domain for my home grid here is home grid. Here's the encryption it's using, the user. It is storing a password, but the uh, exclamation point means that it won't show it on the screen. So that's kind of hidden. Uh, you can do things to, you know, echo um, stuff directly into here to do it yourself, or there's various other programs that can enter in the properly formatted data for you. So when I connect to the file server, an auth call will be made to the auth serve running on port 567. Uh, auth serve is a program um, and it's running in a namespace with the key FS, and so it can do the number crunching that is needed to make sure that my password is valid. On the file server end of things, now that I'm authenticated as a specific user, it will then do the typical things to check if I'm allowed to access certain files. So I'm looking at um, the NDB directory here, and if I look at the permissions of it, NDB. I can see that the files are mostly owned by Sys or Galenda, and they're in group Sys, and those are the only ones who have access to write to those files. Other people can just read them. So I'd be considered an other, um, so I could read NDB local, but if I wanted to say add something, it will tell me no. So if I hit put to save it, it says I can't create the file, permission denied. So yeah, I've received a lot of questions about how it's possible for Plan 9 to offer up this sort of like cloud of computer parts, but keep track of who is allowed to access it. Again, all these things communicate via 9P, and 9P has an authentication call built into it. Uh, it also has a handshake for procedure for deciding on the encryption method to use. Um, this is a noteworthy difference between legacy Plan 9 and 9Front. 9Front switched to a more robust encryption, so connecting to an old Plan 9 system requires specifying the use of the old method. I'll also mention that there is another optional system that can be used kind of on top of all this, um, and it's called SecStore. Oh man, SEC Store. Um, it's a method for kind of storing multiple passwords to things. Uh, it can be used to fetch and then feed into Factotum uh, or passwords for various systems um, so that they can automatically be used. Um, anyway, I hope this sheds some light on how Plan 9 systems handle authentication. And as always, have fun.